everyone, Chris from Charge Services. Uh, today's video on Hick Quick Tips and Tricks. We're going to be showing you how to do um, basic and smart events using your web browser. So if you've got a system that's been set up even by us or by somebody else, you should be able to access this using a Windows laptop um, and then get into the uh, web GUI, which is the user interface. Um, that will allow you to then go into the screens that we're going to look at today. And this will show you how you can edit and amend the alerts that you've got. Uh, the, the screens will be ever so slightly different with certain cameras. Um, in the cameras we're going to be using at the moment, we're going to be using 4 megapixel color view uh, Gen 2 cameras with AccuSense features. Um, it's not going to be specifically about AccuSense features. We'll show you what you can do even if you do not have them. Um, but this will be a good guide for all of those using it domestically and like commercially. Um, it's really for users that want to get alerts through to a mobile device. So rather than getting 100 basic events where you're getting constant motion alerts coming through to your phone, we'll show you a way of trying to minimize those. If you've only got basic event functions, well, again, you can use our techniques to try and minimize false alerts if that's all you've got. Um, but equally, we can use smart events on all of your devices that have got the ability for, for using smart event as well. So look, stay tuned to the rest of the video. Um, we'll go through all of these features. If there's anything else that you need to know, uh, then please drop a comment below and we can do a video for you. Uh, and in the meantime, please like, share and uh, subscribe to the video and don't forget the bell. So everyone, we are going to assume that you already know how to log into your MVR. Uh, if you're not familiar with logging into your MVR via a web browser, then please search for our other videos uh, and you'll see in the how-to sections the basics guides, um, which will get you to, um, to finding your uh, MVR via a web browser or find it via the SAB, SADP tool, then connecting to it via the web browser, installing the plugin and entering your encryption key so you're all working. So uh, look, where are we going to start now? Uh, we're currently on live view. And we're going to go straight into configurations. And then we're going to go to the event menu on the left hand side. And then we're going to jump straight into basic events. So what you're going to need to do is you need to draw your area uh, in the uh, basic uh, version. Uh, so in maybe some of the earlier cameras, you'll find that you're going to have a uh, red squares instead of the green lines. Um, and basically you'll be limited to just doing square motion detection zones. Um, so with this one, we're going to draw it out and around. We're going to avoid the wall because we don't want loads of little um, alerts or loads of little motion detections from flies or lighting or anything like that. We're going to draw it around. You've got to make sure you use up your eight zones. Otherwise, you'll get an error that usually comes up saying that invalid drawing or lines cannot intersect. Um, I've seen a couple of people saying if you click your lines in a right click, it should let you off of it. Um, depending on what your operation is, it's not going to do that. Um, but look, so you push the save button. You can then go into your uh, linkage settings, which is then going to ask you about normal linkage, audible warning, send email, notify surveillance center, full screen, alarm trigger and trigger recording. So these sections over here, this is really to do with the live on the MVR. So do you want anything for the MVR or do you want the MVR to do anything with this alert? If you was to click audible warning, you'll get that really annoying beeping sound out of the MVR every time a motion is detected, which we know we're going to detect loads of motion. That's the whole point. We're covering a big area. So we don't want to do that. Uh, if you want to send an email, you can imagine how many emails you'll be sending in a day. You'll be driving yourself absolutely mad. Notify Surveillance Center is sending the um, notice to the alerts, right? Uh, full screen monitoring is if you're using your um, MVR actually on a monitor or screen. This will trigger the full screen view of that camera. Again, on motion, this will make it happen lots and lots. So I would say avoid it currently. So I'll leave all of these off on mine. Uh, if you've got a um, a camera with strobe lighting, this is the section. In this section here, it says audio and light alarm link. You would have a box in here enable you to trigger the strobe on that camera. So for this purpose, we're going to go trigger recording. We're going to get that saved. We're going to go back in here. And we've been, in this section, we have detection targets. So human and vehicle, or we can turn them off. Um, we can then adjust the sensitivity up and down. Depending on your um, location of your camera and how much you're viewing, you may or may not need to adjust that height. Uh, but so once you've got it saved, 
that will then send that um, that information through for what you want to record. So in this instance, we're going to record all that motion in that area, right? And that's how you do motion detection. If you go to Smart Events, we then get different options. Uh, in this instance, we're going to use an intrusion detection. And on here, you can see we've already got a zone set up and some things that are slightly different. So dependent on the recorder that you have, this will be where you start seeing these green boxes. So if you have a K-series uh, hit vision recorder, you will not get the green boxes on the MVR. You will only be able to use these uh, green boxes if you have an I-series recorder or if you are setting zones via the camera. But I will pre-warn you, dependent on what recorder you have, if you set these settings using the minimum and maximum boxes on the camera, they will not reflect notifications if you are using your MVR to send the notifications to your mobile device. So if you want to use minimum and maximum on say a Gen 1 uh, camera that is not, or that is using a K-series recorder to record it, then you will need to put a memory card into the camera and you will need to link the camera directly to Hit Connect so you receive the notifications and it will use its onboard storage in order to send you those notifications and the, the notifications that you'll watch you're going to be watching footage directly from the camera and if you have an MVR it will effectively be doing a backup recording of what the camera is seeing so key here is i-series recorders will give you the maximum minimum sizes and you do the same thing in here you can just draw an area you uh, if I clear all of this area we'll draw a new area but so we want to know within here only in this zone to the front door if you want notifications in this instance we only want to get human notification because obviously things like vehicles driving past may influence and give us lights we want to set a maximum size to about there because we don't want to know if someone's bigger well as big as a person we don't care if they're bigger than that because it's not going to be a, a correct notification and then we do a minimum size because we just want to try and narrow that down we don't want to get any uh, dogs, cats, small things, birds landing on your doorstep, you don't want to get any notifications from them. So just adjust that size to be something sort of bigger than what you'd get. It's bigger than if a bird landed there and spread its wings out, for instance, but smaller than a person, or, or smaller than a person would be smaller than the big box. And then you click stop drawing. You can set your threshold sensitivity. Obviously, the things to remember is that if you put your threshold up, which will take longer to trigger the notification, it will mean that the notif like the um, the criteria has then had to be satisfied for a longer period of time before you will be notified. So if you're already having issues with lagging notifications, maybe they're taking a couple of seconds to come through to you, if you're putting a threshold up for three seconds or four seconds or five seconds to try and filter out false alerts, you're adding them five seconds before you're even getting your, your lag that you've got. So you may then end up making eight to nine seconds worth of delay of someone being there before you're going to get sent a notification. So if you was using it on a front door, chances are someone's already knocked at your front door before you know about it on your phone um, and kind of defeating the object of it. So in this instance, we have one set, uh, one, uh, one second threshold. We have a high sensitivity because we're looking for human detection targets and we're here looking straight away on this one camera and we're in a very particular zone that has no other reason for you to be there unless you're coming to the front door. So this one is going to be pretty well protected. All right. So once we're on here, you click save. You can check arming schedules so you can set them for particular times. Um, I don't need to do them on a particular time, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to delete it for you. If you click and hold, you can then set the time, double tap it. You can then change that to a particular time. So we want to start at midnight. We want to finish it at 10 o'clock, for example. Save that. We can then add a second section. Let's just start that at 1600. And we want to finish it at 24. That will then fill it so you can have gaps. You can put another one in the middle if you want to do another one in the middle. So you can have certain times excluded. If you want to copy that to all, you click the copy button and you pick the days. And that's the same for motion detection or any of the other detection uh, ones that are on there. So I'm just going to delete that, put this one back to normal. 
So I'm on a 24 hour period on all of them throughout the time. Okay, ignore my invalid operation. I'm using a different browser today. And so it's having a little bit of a paddy where we've just updated some stuff. We can go here over to line crossing detection. Uh, I don't use a line crossing detection on this camera, um, but let's flip over to another one where I do. If we go to this one here. So this one here, we've drawn a line crossing detection line. We've got a maximum and a minimum. Uh, and we've got our detection targets where we've set for human and vehicle. So we want to be alerted of both. So if you want to draw a line crossing detection, I'm just going to show you on one that we don't use. Just go to the garden. And let's just say here we want to draw an area. It will drop you in the line. We can now add the line wherever we want it to. For argument's sake, we're just going to set that here. And then what you'll see is if I go, so we want a minimum size and a maximum size of, say, something along them lines. If anything crosses this line and this is A to B, we can choose it from, from A to B, from B to A, or either way. So you can use these for different scenarios. Let's just say we wanted to know if uh, only if somebody come out of the garage and in. We could set a B to A, draw the line in the in the arrow of the direction we're going in. And this is how you minimise uh, your false alerts. So let's just say, for instance, you can see we've got something coming up here in the screen. It's like a reflection of light and potentially a fly of some description. If we was to have a line crossing detection here, like this, I'm going to draw it here just so we're close to the door. And what you see here is every time this light flashes, from inside you see that light is actually casting a shadow or casting a change of pixels across the line if we leave that line here on say a and b chances are you're going to get a false alert because it looks like something is crossing the line same thing here you can see there's a small haze coming up it looks like it could be a fly or something coming past it might even just be a, a cobweb or something floating in the air um, but when that crosses a line it could cause you a false alert so just think about where you'd have your alerts coming from. Uh, if you're looking at a protective point of view, as a very good example, down this side, where this patio heater is, you can't, you can't come through there, or if you was coming through there, there's no way of getting into this garden realistically without jumping multiple fences and getting in from a different road. So it's very difficult to get here, but you could come over a side fence and then into this uh, garden area. So to minimise, say, false alerts, we could turn that that we only want to see something coming from B to A. And then if something flies over and comes back or wiggles within the line, we shouldn't get an alert. And then we can adjust the minimum and maximum sizes. By doing that, you could probably half the amount of alerts that you could get through this if you don't have an AccuSense camera. So positioning of the lines using A and B these are key to reducing your alerts all right so make sure you do them if you can um, and if you haven't got uh, an i-series recorder then I, I would say it's probably cheaper to buy an upgrade if you've got a low a low value k series recorder anyway upgrading to an i-series recorder isn't going to cost you a lot of money if you want to go down the route of putting in memory cards into each individual camera there is also some trickery that you need to do with the wiring um, of the cameras. You need to uh, to link them into your network direct so they can see um, the the internet without having to go for an MVR. Um, by the time you deal with all of that, it was probably cheaper just to buy an, an i-series MVR and put it in. Um, and then the i-series MVR also gives you a couple of benefits that you can silence the alerts, um, like put it on do not disturb and turn them back on again really quickly. So... That's what I would say is uh, go in and do them using this. It's the best way to do it. Uh, linkage alerts. I'm going to take you back to just on uh, an intrusion alert. So we actually do use this one. We go to linkage method. And you see here on this one, obviously we're enabled. Under normal linkage, we click notify surveillance center. And this one we've got full screen monitoring. And the reason we do that is because the full screen of the MVR will flick. If something triggers 
we can turn on the TV in our bedroom, as a good example. Uh, it'll be straight on HDMI, so we'll go straight onto our view of our CCTV cameras. And because this has been triggered, and a smart event for an intrusion has been triggered, our screen will be displaying the most recent camera that that alert has come up on. So in this instance, if we hear something in the back garden, you think, what's that? You can turn the cameras on. If you've had an alert, it will have gone straight to full screen monitoring, um, or we'll be watching the four or five four, four or five channels and the, the rotation of those on the uh, on the CCTV. So you know when it comes up, full screen monitoring will flick over. You can log in quick and, and use them from there. Uh, the other section here, make sure it says trigger recording. So you're now getting your events set up. All right. The other important thing is how do you use these events to maximize your storage? Because the biggest problem we'll see with people is you've got your recordings on uh, constant recording. Uh, what that means is that you're going to have a constant recording in your um, in your hot block on your hard disk. So everything's going to be recording all the time. So a good example on this. Um, this one sat up on uh, motion. Uh, I don't know why we've actually left that on here. I was doing another video earlier. Um, but what we can do is we can change these. Select the timing. And we want to change this to event. All right. So when we do an event, we can now change this recording type. So it's going to record all events. All right. By doing this, it means any motion event and any smart event, right? So either of the two events will be triggered by this recording. So if we've set up basic motion alerts, let me come back on here now. All right, so I'm playful with this. But so if we have our motion set up in our zones, let me clear that out, but we will detect all motion within this camera zone. Um, that will then be causing a recording to happen on our uh, storage. And then we'll then also have the smart events will then also cause a recording. So if you go on your playback on your Hit Connect app, instead of having the big blue bar where it's continually recording and now you're going to have to find all of them little sections of motion that you haven't been sent the individual alerts for, you will have small orange bars in sectional pieces. So in certain cameras, I mean, this front camera, because we're constantly getting motion all of the time all night, it's quite difficult that you, you will have a lot of instances of motion all night. However, the back garden, we might only have five or six pieces of notification over a six, seven hour period all night, which means if we need to find something within seven hours worth of footage, chances are we'll only have five or six minutes in order to view. So that's really the best way to do it. Set them up like this. Use your linkage methods, notify surveillance, full screen, and then use your trigger recordings. So storage, remember we went through that, is to change them over. You can type uh, type into any of them, anything that you open, just change it. You can go from motion, continuous, change it to event. Keep them 24 hours, and you can make sure you copy them all over. When you're doing it as well, if you're using um, a colour view with audio, make sure you go here and tick on uh, record audio. And then that will make sure that your actual saved recordings have got audio on them as well, rather than just a live view. Um, and then you can change your settings in there for that. Okay, so look, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, that should be everything you need in order to use your events and smart events. If you have any questions, please drop them below in the comments. And remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Every little one helps. And we'll see you on the next video.